was in 2016 when this happened. I was working as a model. I was kind of everywhere. I was like living out of my car. I had this job and that job and let me stay with my friend's mom and let me stay with my agent and let me live here because at that same time, we were having some family problems back at home and I really was just like, I have to figure out how I'm gonna make money. I was like modeling and doing all sorts of different random like drink serving jobs and I was selling horses and I mean like I was everywhere. My life was just like, I don't know where I'm going. If you're new here, I'm living and this is my channel. We talk about fitness, about wellness, about certain things that I've learned on my crazy opportunities that I've been on and lifestyle stuff. So if you haven't yet, subscribe now. I was on season 36 of Survivor. It was Survivor Ghost Island. I wanna just talk to you about how I got on and my application process. So that night before I got this message, I, literally fell down to my knees and was like, God, I can't do this anymore. Like I was working for somebody who made me feel super uncomfortable. I was like, what am I even doing with my life? I have a degree, I don't know what I'm doing with it. Please help me, like please, just anything, anything. The next day, I get this Facebook message from my friend Ashton. Now she's one of my best friends, but at this time, I didn't ever like, I've never even seen her in person. Like I just was Facebook friends with her and we had like a mutual friend and she was like, hey, I know you studied film and television at TCU. I have a friend who's looking for someone like you for this adventure TV show. I don't know if you're interested, but she's legit, hear her out. And I literally was like, oh my gosh, what? I get this message from the person she's talking about and she's like, hey, I am a casting director. You seem to be a perfect fit for who we're looking for. I don't really know you, so let's jump on a call and let's talk and I wanna to get to know who you are. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is wild. This is so crazy. And then she's like, have you ever seen Survivor? And I'm like, okay. This was literally just like a knock on my head saying, Libby, hello, I have an opportunity for you. And we literally talked for like 45 minutes. I unload from like, I grew up in a small town in Texas. I work at Disney on and off, pulling out every piece of everything I know about my life. So then I, I start the application process that night. I also bought my CVS subscription and start re-watching every season of Survivor ever possible. I would be blow drying my hair watching Survivor, researching every single contestant I can find. Who do I look like? Who do I seem like? Who do I act like? What's my strategy gonna be like? Like all these things going in my head, reaching out to all of these friends like, hey, tell me everything you know about Survivor. I was like, I could literally be on this show. This is crazy. I freaking worked my butt off to get on that show. Started the application process, filled out the 50 page paper. After like five phone call interviews, I would be texting her being like, hey, any update? Nothing. Hey, any update? Nothing. Hey, any update? Yes. Okay, it's like between you and this other person. Oh my God, every day, please Lord, I need this, I want this. I've never loved this show more. I never spent a moment doing anything else if it wasn't work or watching Survivor. And I know some of you can relate, okay? And this show is so great. So if you haven't seen it before, what are you doing? Watch it. You're going to become obsessed. This season, I don't know how long, but <sighs> so that's for another episode, okay? I finally get the call that I'm going to be flown out to LA to meet Jeff and the executive producers. And it's like, oh my God, I can't tell anybody. <laughs> It's crazy, but wild. Fortunately for me, if I have a very steady job, which a lot of contestants do, I just don't think I could have handled it. I don't know what I would have done. It really worked out in my favor that I had all these random things that was going through my post-graduation crisis. I am in LA, I'm in my hotel room, I'm making notes. I mean, I am journaling everything. The man sitting across from me is staring at me, he's eating this, he looks like this. This Asian guy is like really sitting up straight and super athletic and seems very intelligent. You're just like creating all these stereotypes, like this, I could play with this person, I could play with this person. We're in a hotel, so we don't really know who's there for us and who's there for not us at first. We, we are completely quarantined in this. You can't talk to anyone, you go straight to your room, you only have hours that you can work out. So that's where I found the people that I would knew. I was like, okay, cool, like we're both in the gym. All right, good to know. I get my first interview with the executive producers. 
let me tell you guys, that was some interview. Thought that I freaking failed that so bad. I, I'm not gonna tell you all the questions that I was asked because that's probably a secret. Let's just say that they didn't really have a lot of faith in me. Understandable. I mean, like, I'm just some blonde girl that's coming in, like, smiling, like, hi. And they're like, uh. No. I felt like Elle Woods whenever she was walking into Harvard. No. This girl? Absolutely not. She might be athletic, but like she doesn't even know how to do anything. I'll tell you the one question that I got that I think they were like looking for the single blonde chick that's like, I'm gonna flirt with this person, I'm gonna flirt with this person, I'm gonna do my thing and just backstab people. So I just kind of like, you know, played to that role. But then they were like, anybody here stick out to you? This guy is hot. He looks like Eric Decker. He didn't end up playing, so I don't, I don't know, he disappeared. Jeff's like, you know who Eric Decker is? What girl does not know who Eric Decker is? And I was like, oh yeah, he played with the Jets, he played like blah, blah, blah. And he was just like, oh my gosh, she knows football. We're gonna keep her around, thank God. But anyways, because I knew football, I got to stick around. Thank goodness that guy was really hot. Moving on. Then I get the interview with the executive producers and they're like, say something mean to Jeff, say a cuss word. I don't know how to say something mean to Jeff. He's a beautiful face. I'm like, uh, what? He's sitting right in front of me and I'm already still starstruck. Like, no, I'm not gonna say anything mean to him. And I was like, Jeff, you look tired. I mean, if that's not get rid of her right now, I don't know what is. I just was so embarrassed I said that. I was like, Jeff, you look tired. That was so, I mean, it was just the most awkward moment I think of my life. Awful, like, I, why can't I be mean to people? And Jeff just started laughing, and then Mark Burnett just started laughing, and oh God, just please, let me just dig this hole a little deeper and just jump in it. One of the executive producers was like, yeah, no, I don't think you can handle this. Something just fired me up. I was like, I think you're wrong. I absolutely can handle this. And if you don't think that I can handle this, let me prove to you. And then Jeff's like, I believe in her. And just stared at me and was like, I believe in her. And then Mark Burnett was like, yeah, me too. I like just was sitting here like, I, I'm pretty sure I had sweat stains, like, like dripping sweat. Just sitting there just like, okay, okay. They believe in me. Jeff Probst believes in me. I feel like I just ran a marathon. After that interview, that was the last thing that I remember. Besides like psychology and all of those things, I think I blacked out after that day. Like I'm pretty sure I was just like, that just happened. I think I got on the show and I didn't really have anybody to, that I could talk to about this situation. Like nobody really knew besides my casting director, my mom and my sister. I got on the show, I got to be a castaway. The process was super exciting. So every year I worked at Walt Disney World and so I went to Disney in February and that whole time I couldn't talk about it. My whole life was just basically a secret. As working at Disney and working and performing, I wouldn't post a lot about that. I would just post that I was at Disney World every day. I was like, hardcore training, trying to like do all these weird different exercises. I was like, I don't know what to expect. I was working on stability. I was working on balance. I was working on strength. I was working on puzzles. I was like downloading all these apps. Like, okay, what do I do? And I had this family friend. I was like, I want to learn how to make a fire. And they lived in Florida too. And I was there and I was like, I want to, I want to be able to learn how to make a fire like a Navy SEAL. I took a weekend off and I was like, guys, I need y'all to help me. I wanna go out and learn how to make fire on my own. I wanna learn how to do all this stuff. And I knew how to hunt, but I didn't know how to hunt without a gun. I knew how to survive, like I could just be out in the woods, but like, I need all the basics. I learned how to make fire. He trained me so hard. He was like, I want you to be able to make a fire so quick that like you wouldn't hesitate, you wouldn't be afraid. And it's like, oh, well that's what I need to learn anyways. I learned how to fish with a spear. And when I got off, he was like, well, would, I mean, you could have just told me. I was like, no, I couldn't have actually. That was all I did for like preparation because you really don't know what to expect. You have 35 seasons or 34 seasons to study, but like every season is different. That was my application process. That was my process of getting ready for Survivor. Here are my top tips in applying for Survivor. Tip number one. Watch the game, watch the game, watch the game. All the little things that Jeff says, 
they're key. He freaking loves Survivor. You know it, you see it, but you even see it more when you're out there. You better freaking love that show just as much as he does. Know the game. Tip number two, know who you are and your strategy. That means what is your personality and how are you going to act when you're at your most vulnerable state. Don't forget that. You're gonna plan all these different strategies. Oh, this is the type of person I am. Okay, try doing that with three cameras when you are starving around all these different strangers. Good luck. They all have strategies too. So know your strategy when you are at your most vulnerable state. And also remember to keep an open mind when you're out there. Don't stick to the strategy that you're creating in your head right now. For the application process, it's very important to have some type of strategy to explain to them your personality type. Another tip I would recommend is finding the person that you play most like and understand their game from start to finish. Then watch the show backwards. Watch them, know how far they made it. They learn all of this stuff as the show goes on. But if you notice, you watch it backwards, you understand the mistakes they made. You understand the people that they played with. One of my favorite people to watch was Chelsea and Kim Sprodlin. I loved watching them. I loved watching Harmony, who didn't love watching her. She was amazing. Kelly Wentworth. I also loved watching Sierra. All the girls, I love watching and learning from them. Number three, when you're applying, you need to take your qualities that you're trying to show them, describe yourself, and times it by like a million. Make your personality huge. Whatever you do, blow it up. Make it a big deal. It is a big deal. You are a big deal. All of these things that you do, maybe you, mm, well, I'll t tell you mine. So my family has a meat market. Growing up in my hometown, I worked at that meat market. I got my hands dirty all the time. Did I have to like skin the deer? No, but I did have to help process it. You know, help my dad do all these things. To you, if I just like leave out all the details, it's like, okay, cool, you help process a deer. No, you freaking add the adjectives. You make it a big deal. It is a big deal, make it even a bigger deal. Become close with your casting director. Don't get too annoying. Don't be that person that's literally messaging them every day saying how much you wanna be on the show. Then you're just weird. And last thing, know your favorite parts of the show. Why do you wanna be on the show? Let that be your motivation whenever you're being interviewed, whenever you're talking to people, whenever you're even applying online. Know your favorite parts so you light up when you talk about it. Know your favorite challenges, know your favorite winners, know your favorite alliances, your favorite strategies. Know your favorites and stick with that. I hope these tips help. Be sure and subscribe. I am answering your questions about the show in the next episode. If you haven't DM me, do that now and I'll be sure and answer your questions. See you then.